I'm assuming then people who do things like when should I sell my stocks and shares and that yeah. do things like this. That's a really important comment because this the mathematics of expectation is basically the mathematics of balancing risk and reward. And so any investment, any gamble, whether it's an insurance policy or a game of poker, is actually at its heart that calculation. What are the chances of this happening and how much will I gain or lose? What are the chances of this happening? But there might be thousands of outcomes and stocks and shares, you do not have definitive answers for the probability. That's where the expertise of the, the financial investors, they have a guess, maybe a good guess about what's likely to happen. In the case of GameStop, um, that recent debacle, they, uh, no one had any real idea because it was driven by forces they hadn't expected. Reddit got involved and changed what the balance of things. But we're, we're taking a complicated subject and maybe simplifying it slightly. But hey, that's what mathematicians do to go around that modeling cycle. Simplify, solve it, and then you add the upgrades in. And that's a really nice feeling of power, I think. If you understand a bit of maths, you can start on that cycle. And I really get excited as a maths teacher talking to students about when they realise that mathematics is not about learning hard facts, it's about having power. You understand some simple things, you suddenly have some power to predict the real world. That's a nice thing. Well, like I commented about having a simple bit of knowledge gives you power. Once you've understood the basic principle, the idea that maths generalises gives you power. So you can look at a different version of the game. Uh, instead of a d6, why don't you use a d8? And instead of losing on a 1, you could say lose on anything else. I'm going to say you lose on a one or a two. And I've, I've chosen that because, first of all, you might score higher because you can get up to eight now. But maybe you're more likely to lose it because now one or a two out of eight is a quarter of the time you're going to lose it all. So, like, one thing is pulling you, maybe you should aim higher. Another thing is pulling you, maybe you should aim lower. And that's always a nice thing. It's not obvious whether you should change your strategy or not. So maybe if, if you're watching the bonus material here, May speculate, if the, if the rules are this, instead of six-sided dice, you use an eight-sided, and instead of losing on a, on a one, you lose on a one or a two, what should you do? And maybe we're at the first stage of the mathematical model. Like, let's not worry about playing against someone else. Let's go our, our basic strategy, which is what should you aim for before you say, bang, I've just lost it all. Uh, so I run a simulation, a million rolls. Here's the D8, and uh, we'll see what happens. Do you, want, do you want to make a prediction? Um... The, the background is 20 for a d6, lose on a 1. So you can go higher or lower. I, think, I don't think... I'm going to tell you, you shouldn't stay on the same. I feel like you should aim slightly lower. Do you have a reason for that, or is it a gut feeling? Just because there's that 1 in 4 chance of blowing the bank seems dangerous to me. Seems dangerous, so maybe the risks are increased and not matched by the reward increase. That's what I feel like. Pick a number, come on. Uh, if 20 was the original best target. 18. 18. So you're back in horse number 18, yeah. and we'll just run a million. All right. Here we go. So eight-sided die, lose on a rolling one or two, you're back in 18. I'm not going to tell you what I'm backing, because you kind of have. have the answer. <laughs> Here we go. So the first 20 turns go slow. Uh, 32 is doing very well. Not looking good for you, Brady. No, I, this happened last time. Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. Like, until you've got a lot of data, there's just you don't trust anything. And a lot of data, I mean a lot of data. It's already stabilising a bit though. You can see there's a weird flat bit at the beginning again. It's interesting. 15 is currently winning. 18 is first. 18 is in the front. You'd be cheering. Oh no, you've oh. gone second place, third place. It's on the podium occasionally. That was 30,000 turns. So already the shape is stabilised. You can see aiming too high is again not great. And somewhere around here is looking promising. 18 is still on the podium. First place again. I'm impressed. Do you believe it? I mean, it's not quite like horse racing in that I know what's going to happen, and you could have calculated it with the same calculations we did, but I like doing simulations where you actually slow it down. Like, mathematicians want it all over quickly. Uh, people watching a race want to see the race, right? Six, 16 is first, second, third, 19 is third, 700,000, 800,000 turns, 16 is overtaking your 18, but 18 is still... Oh, drop it. million turns. Brady gets third place. I'm not disappointed. It's pretty good. So your instinct was right to go a bit lower. Actually, the first place was 16. Now, what this doesn't tell us is, is 16 what you'd get from the calculation? And I'm not going to do that. This, the calculation is simple enough for anyone who wants to, to deal with it. You have to deal with a few more fractions, which is slightly surprising. But the same basic principle, uh, I will tell you that one of the three numbers that got on the podium is the correct predicted one. Um, but I'll leave it as a bit of suspense. Well done. You got on the podium and your instincts for gambling uh, are better than you demonstrated at the beginning of the video.
3, 9, 15, 18, 23, 26, 32, 36, 39, 43, 46, 42!